as you can see, I've got my CNC router ATC and auto touch off function working correctly. We did a tool change and then we went over to our touch off location, touched off, did a fine touch off to define our tool length here. So let's take a look at how we go about setting this up. So the first thing we want to do is go to our setup screen here. You can find this from our ATC screen. You can just click on setup over here. And then these are all of the parameters we need to define so that we can uh, correctly change our tools. So each one of these represents our tool change location. What we would do is we would jog over we would get our tool right in our uh, you can actually put the tool in the slot if you would like get it to that position because uh, doing so will allow you to set a couple of different parameters but for tool one let's uh, imagine we're already in the slot there so what we're going to do is we're going to go over to position one here we're going to press set and then it will automatically update this location if we are in the rack as shown here we can press our set button this will give us our load plane we can also define this parameter which is our Y center line this is inside uh, as the tool sits in the rack so we can hit our set here now for our clearance plane we want to make sure that we are clear the spindle is clear of all of our tools as they sit in the rack here so if our tool comes up to here we want to make sure that the bottom of our spindle is clearing this once we jog to that location we're going to press our clearance plane here press this this will go out and get this information and enter it into the DRO here our tool change feed rate uh, we can define that this is the speed in which it will uh, slide the tool in lift up move over to the next location you can also um, set the delay here this is the amount of time that the ATC will pause before moving after it releases and clamps the tool we've got our touch sensor height here which is also the same as our gauge block height or our plate thickness here our safe Z location this is where we want to uh, set our Z height for moving across the table in any direction to make sure that we're our longest tool will clear any obstacles in the way and then we want to jog over to our touch off location so we'll just move over to two here we'll set that one press the set button here and set two and then just continue on for however many slots you have you can use the 10 slot rack on an 8 tool rack you can use the 8 uh, you can use it on a 6 tool it doesn't really matter just don't enter any information in here and uh, it will not look at that okay so we've got all of our racks set up we've got our clearance height set up we've got our uh, load plane our clearance and uh, sliding out when we slide out the rack we want to set up that that's our rack clearance so somewhere in this position where all the tools and the spindle will clear the rack we want to define that so we can set that with our clearance rack position here just press that and then now we want to jog over to our touch off location there are three parameters that we need to set up here. We need to set up our X and Y coordinates. Alright, we 
want to position right above our touch sensor there. Then we want to press our X and our Y. And then for the Z, this is the maximum Z distance that we're going to travel. So what we're going to do is we're going to just jog away. And then we're going to put our Z down just below where it would touch our sensor. And then press our set button. Because what's going to happen when we go for a touch off, we're going to start at our safe Z height. Now for me, I've got my safe Z height set about right there because I've got 17 inches of travel. On a CNC router, you won't have so much clearance there. So after we get all of our parameters set up, there's another thing, a couple other features we need to set up. Our low air sensor. If you've got a low air sensor connected uh, to alert you when the air pressure is too low for a tool change, simply type in a one here and that will enable that feature. If you want to disable the feature, you just simply type in a zero. Most ATCs also, uh, most of these ATC spindles for routers also have a clamp and unclamp input. If you would like to enable that, you can select one and it will look at to make sure that it is clamped or unclamped. I've got both of these disabled currently. Same thing for a touch off. If you want to do the auto touch off after each tool change, simply put a one in here and it will go and touch off after a tool change. I'm going to show you that now and then we'll also disable this feature and you can see how that works. So what's going to happen is you're going to be running your parts and let's say this is where it stops when it calls for the M6 so this is the position it's going to return to once the tool change is complete. So currently we have tool number three in the spindle. So I'm going to put in tool number one. So I did an M6 T1 right here. You can see we currently have three in the spindle. So I'm going to hit enter. We're going to go to our safe Z location. We're going to slide over to position three and store the old tool. We're going to go down to our load position, we're going to slide into the rack, we're going to release, lift to our clearance plane, we're going to go over to position one, we're going to lower, we're going to clamp, we're going to slide out, the tool change is complete, we're now going to go to our touch off location. We're going to pause, then we're going to start touching on, uh, probing at our probe feed rate. We're going to do a fine probe. We've got our tool length. Now we're going to go back to where the tool change was initiated. At this point, your G-code will start back up your, and you'll continue running your part. Now, if we disable the touch-off feature, let's say you're making a run of 50 of the same parts and you have all your tools loaded in here and after you do one part, you've got all your tool links defined. You're satisfied with the uh, measurements you got. Everything looks good on your first part. So then you want to disable that feature. You can just simply type in a zero here. And then now when we do a tool change it will not do a touch off. So this saves you some time. We're going to go uh, tool two. So now we're doing our tool change. We're changing the tool two. We're putting one back into the rack, release, raise up to the clearance, move over to tool two, lower, 
clamp, slide out of the rack. We're going to come back up. Our tool change is complete. We're going to go back to where the tool change was initiated and cycle start. So you can see how that works. Guys, I want to thank Dean for his help in going through the macros with me and trying to work this out. Finally got it dialed in and working correctly. Uh, I'm really happy and satisfied with the way it, it's working now. I'm going to uh, be compiling the macros and also getting a macro for a pick and place tool change. So I'll have both of those available shortly. If anyone's interested in my CNC router screen set with the auto touch off, uh, send me an email, contact me through the website. We'll see if we can't uh, get you set up. Thanks for watching, guys, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you have any suggestions or questions, please feel free to comment. Thanks for watching, and most importantly, be safe.